tree right behind me is in the family Fabaceae in the genus Gymnoclotus, and the specific epithet is Dioicus. So the full species name is Gymnoclotus Dioicus. This is Kentucky coffee tree. It happens to be one of my favorite trees, all because of a paper that I read that linked this tree's evolutionary history with the megafauna, think giant sloths, mastodons, that used to roam through North America. This tree has a fairly large seed pod, which you can see here, kind of kidney bean shaped. Inside the seed pod are these very large seeds. You can see that there are several inside each pod. These seeds have an extremely hard seed coat, and it was believed that the only animal that would eat these would be megafauna that would either crunch them just enough and then through the digestion process would plant these trees throughout the landscape or simply swallow the seeds whole and then the acids in the digestion process would help break that seed coat so that the seeds could germinate. These pods are newly developing so they formed from this stalk which was where the flowers would have been earlier in the spring. They start out as green and then start to redden and eventually they will turn brown. Some of the trees that we look at will have male and female flowering on a single tree. Those are called monoecious species. Kentucky coffee tree has male and female trees, meaning that the male and female flower parts are on different trees. Those species are called dioecious. If you see pods on a Kentucky coffee tree, you know that you're looking at a female Kentucky coffee tree versus a male Kentucky coffee tree. Bark on the Kentucky coffee tree breaks into these stiff plates and has a very ash gray color to it. If you look up, you can see here on this branch, it's breaking into a thin but fairly stiff plate that peels away. On some of the upper branches, you can see that that's a very distinct look in terms of the bark. When very young, the bark is a smooth gray color. As the bark gets older on larger trunks, it doesn't peel away from the trunk as much. These plates don't peel away as much. They do tend to sit as flat uh, furrows. The pith is the center growing portion of a twig. And on Kentucky coffee tree, it's large and has this sort of salmon pink color. Leaves and buds are alternately arranged on the twig and stem. Part of the name Gymnoclotus means naked arm or naked branch. And if we look at just the thickness of these twigs, we can see that once all of the leaves are off, that these do have very stout, just look at that in relation to my finger, very stout twigs that make these branches look naked once the leaves have fallen off. The entire structure we're looking at here is one single leaf. This is a bipinnately compound. First it follows up the main rachis and then it breaks out into smaller sections. These leaf blades here are leaflets, so they make up piece of the entire leaf. This is one of the larger leaves of deciduous trees that we have for trees native to North America. When it goes from the end of the petiole through the rachis to the tip, these can measure 18 inches to two feet in length. The leaf structure allows plenty of light to pass through, so you don't have an incredibly dark shade under this tree. To give a sense of tree form, we can start at the base and, and see that the trunk has a flare to it. Most trunks should have a flare if they were planted properly. As we move up the trunk, we can see that relatively quickly it starts to break into multiple branches that give it more of its form. So it loses that main single trunk. So this is a, another decurrent tree, which is fairly common for many of our deciduous trees.
stepping back a little bit, we can practice something I like to call dendro at a distance, which means you take a step back and see if you can identify the tree from some of its larger features. Here, just the structure and form of it can help tell us that we're looking at Kentucky coffee tree. And if all the leaves were off, all you would see would be thick, stout branches. And if we were looking at a female Kentucky coffee tree, we would likely see pods, the leathery pod, on the tree even after the leaves have fallen off.